Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today we're going to do something a bit different. So recently I found this PC with a Ryzen 7 2700X, 32 gigs of RAM and an RTX 3070 for 650 Aussie dollars, which is around 400 US dollars. And it's super dusty, so our objective today is to clean it up. It's that simple. It's a great deal. It's like a super incredible deal actually, but it's just dusty. So yeah. So in order to clean a PC, we don't actually need much. So starting off, we'll need microfiber cloths. They're available about anywhere really. And they're dirt cheap. Like I got this for nearly $4 for a four pack. Now we'll also need an eye blender brush. I got this for four Aussie dollars from Kmart because it's super helpful in getting into all the smaller corners of components and it just helps a lot to have something that's more flexible than say just a gust of air which is then provided by our next component, the air duster. So this here is the copy cleaner air duster which I got for a hundred Aussie dollars and in my personal opinion it's a very good investment for those looking to have compressed air to clean their PC. It's super reliable, super powerful and does its job very well. That's all I have to say about it. So moving on we have our thermal paste. Um, this is for dried up thermal paste and older PCs. Um, this tube costed me $10.79 Aussie dollars on Amazon, and it's a 4 gram tube, so not a lot, but it should do the job fine. So moving on to our final product, we have 300 grams of aerosol isopropyl alcohol. This costed me $12, and it should help remove any stubborn stains on er any one of our parts. I don't think we'll need it that much for this build, but we'll see. So without further ado, let's begin the cleaning process. So first off, we have to remove every single component from the PC. This is because each and every one of these components is caked in dust. Therefore they need to be cleaned separately and not just in one block in the PC. I think it's kind of funny that this system is barely four years old because look at these drives. They're just caked in dust. Like, wow, the hard drive got covered a bit by the SSD, so it's less dusty, but damn, is it still dirty. And the power supply is out. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. There's only surface dust on the thing. Alright, we got the motherboard combo out. Now this one will remain in one block because it's easier to manage, but I will be disassembling this further later on in order to do a deeper clean. For now, it will stay on the side with our drives and the graphics card. Now for the case itself, we'll be using the electric duster to get all the dust bunnies and some of the surface dust out. 
It's a really satisfying process, but it's also really loud, thanks to the duster. Now remove the front panel. We'll be giving this a quick run through with the electric duster and it will be further cleaned later on with a microfiber cloth and the makeup brush. Now leave that to the side. Um, we'll be giving the rest of the panels a light dusting as well. And these fans right now will be cleaned a bit later on with the makeup brush to make sure there's no dust residing on the blades. Now with the front panel, it's time to give it a light wipe with the microfiber cloth. I'll be using isopropyl alcohol. Whoops, I broke that. But yeah, I'll be using this isopropyl alcohol to give it a light wipe and get rid of any potential stains on the surface. Now flip the front panel around. This is where the makeup brush comes in handy as it is super easy for you to use to get the dust out of these small corners. You know, like this one right here. Yep, you don't need much to clean these, just so your main objective is to get the dust out of the surface. Like that's basically it. And yeah, this brush helps a lot with that. Now moving on to the drive bays, the dust on these have already been removed by the duster but a wipe with a microfiber cloth should help finalize the clean look of these. Next up, use the same microfiber cloth and get some isopropyl alcohol on it. This will help clean the system further than just getting the dust off. So wipe every surface down. That's the main objective for this stage. And uh, since I accidentally put the tripod on the same desk, I will probably speed this clip up so no one gets motion sickness. Really sorry about that. Now with the case wiped down, it's time to clean the fans. So grab your screwdriver and start unscrewing the fans. Now unplug the fan connectors and remove the fans themselves from the case. Now these connectors differ from case to case, but um, the method is still the same, just pull them out like so. Now for the fans, we will wipe them down like so, not too thoroughly because we will use this makeup brush to get all the dust out from every nook and cranny of these fans. See how much dust that's coming out? Yep. Mm, that's why we have a brush here and not just a cloth because it helps so much with cleaning. Just brush them out like so, and you have your fan cleaned up. Don't forget to brush the other sides too, as they can still hold a lot of dust as you can see. So make sure you run your brush through every single corner of the fan to ensure that there's no dust left. Now you'll repeat the process for the other two case fans in the system.
Now with the case pretty much cleaned up already, we'll be moving it out of the way for now and move the internal components to this desk so we can get started on cleaning them all at once. Yeah. Now starting off we'll be cleaning the CPU, RAM and motherboard combo. First off, what you'll want to do is to remove the cooler. Now once the cooler is removed, get rid of some of the dust on the motherboard with the duster. Now clean out the thermal paste with the microfiber cloth. Usually people add in a bit of isopropyl alcohol, but I don't need it. Now whip out the duster again to make sure that the grime and residue stays off the motherboard. Since there's still thermal paste residue lying around in the smaller corners, I'll be using the makeup brush to make sure they stay out of the motherboard. Now the RAM sticks are relatively clean, but they still have a bit of dust, so I'll just give them a light run through with the brush to make sure that these dust particles won't be an issue. Don't forget to clean out the dust on the VRM covers as well. Now starting off with the CPU cooler, you have to wipe out the thermal paste residue at the bottom of the heatsink. If the residue gets stuck in the fins, use the makeup brush to get them out. Also use this opportunity to clean out the fins if they're super dusty. Surprisingly, this one isn't that dusty, considering the condition of the entire PC. Now onto the fan of the cooler, repeat the process with the case fans. Just use the brush and remove every speck of dust you can see. However, we can't clean the entire fan from here, so we will have to separate it from the heatsink. And to do so, I will try to pry the fan from the heatsink. Now there will be two clips down below that is barely visible, but um, you'll be able to see it to try and pry this out. Now as you can see, I tried to use the IO shield, but it isn't working, so... I will now grab a screwdriver to try and pry this out. It's not the most practical solution to this problem, but it's something that can and will work. Probably. Once we've pried the cooler open, you can see there's a layer of dust caked on the heatsink. We'll need to use a duster for this because as you can see the brush just simply does not work. Now equip the brush head of the duster and start dusting like usual except you'll now use the brush itself to brush off any dust that lies in between the fins. Now moving on, we will also dust the CPU fan to make sure no dust stays on the surface of the fan itself. Oh, that's enough dusting anyway. So, time to grab the makeup brush and clean the fan. Since the outside of the fan is also quite filthy, I will be wiping it down with microfiber cloth to make sure no residue or anything stays on the fan. Now before reassembling the cooler, I will now be checking the heat sinks to see if there's any dust stuck between them. So I shall reattach this bracket here, look in between the fins to see if there's any dust bunnies, as well as give it one more wipe to make sure. Now 
Now I will be giving the fans one more clean here as I've noticed some spots I missed. So I'll be right back. Now, with the fan finally cleaned, we will now be reattaching it to the heatsink. So remember where the clips and the orientation of the fan was, the way you found it? And just press it down. Pretty simple. This may require a bit of force, so don't be afraid. Just um, be careful not to cut your hand because these heatsink fins are super sharp. You can also use the screwdriver to help ease it in its position. And there we have it. The cooler finally secure. Now I will use isopropyl alcohol to wipe down the fan one more time making sure no residue stays on and gives the fan a nice finish. Now before we reassemble the cooler, let's clean the other components. For the power supply, outside of the surface dust, it is relatively clean and a quick wipe should do the job. With the power supply done, put it to the side. Now grab the drives and also give each of them a quick wipe. Now, since the hard drive also has a lot of these small crevices, we'll also need to use the makeup brush to make sure no dust stays stuck in there. Just give it a quick run through and you should be good. And there we have it, the hard drive shining like new. Now for the GPU, I will start off by using the electric duster to try and get off any surface dust that lies within the fans. Make sure to hold the fans still as they can generate electric currents when spinning and that can cause damage to the GPU, so keep that in mind. Now time for us to peel the plastic. Now this plastic, outside of ASMR purposes, it actually held off a lot of surface dust from the GPU. Now that's a good thing, but this plastic was a pain in the ass to peel off, so... Sorry, not sorry. Now, we'll use the makeup brush to make sure there's no dust residing on the fan blades. Now granted, I could have opened this up and replaced the thermal paste also, but it just isn't that dirty to begin with thanks to those plastic wrappings. So I'll just leave it as is and probably put it back into the case this way. Give it one last clean and there we have it. All the components are now cleaned and ready to be reassembled. So let's get started. So starting off with the motherboard combo, since this is a Ryzen 7 2000 series chip, it runs pretty hot and therefore I will be applying an X pattern rather than the usual P size dot. I mean, yeah, both can work just fine but I just want to make sure. So add a few dots to these corners and you should be done. Now this Wraith Prism cooler is pretty simple to install on paper, 
There are two hooks that you have to hook up to the pre-installed br mounting brackets on the motherboard. Now, first you have to use pressure to press down the side without the black tab. And then once you have that side hooked up, go to the side with the black tab and press it down. That should be what it's supposed to be on paper anyway, but um, as you'll see in a few seconds that I managed to fuck this up royally. As you can see, I have snapped off the pressure tab on this Wraith cooler and will now have to use a placeholder one until the replacement arrives. Which is unfortunate, but hey, it's an occupational hazard and there's nothing I could have done about it. So I got like this cheap ass snowman cooler. It's pretty garbage, but like it should cool the CPU enough to boot. That's what I'm aiming for right now, like, nothing more, nothing less, just so, like, it, it works, yeah, just so it works, that's it. Just a side note, this cooler does have a similar installing mechanism, but since the pressure tab is metal instead of plastic, we at least won't run into the same issue we did with the Wraith Prism, which is, yeah. The cooler is in. It's unfortunate about this Wraith cooler and how much time I spent cleaning it up, but I guess it is what it is. So I'll just put it to the side and yeah, let's reassemble the PC.
with the side panel on, we're officially done with the build. Now all I need to do is to take in the consequences of my actions, spend $50 on a replacement cooler, and um, test to see if this system works or not. So I guess that's the plan for now. Um, catch you in three seconds. Probably. Here we are half a month later because, um, well, uni got in the way, but I got the replacement cooler and it works, so yay. And okay, the system boots. So yeah, that's a double win, I think. But yeah, the system boots into Windows just fine without issues, so I think that's a roaring success for us today. And I believe that's the end of the video, so a bit disappointing that there's no gaming benchmarks for this combo, but I have to go home at the end of the month and that means I have to empty out my storage, which means I can't keep any of this. So yeah. Um, even though we can't play games on this, I still think we did a great job of cleaning it out and making sure that it looks sleek, runs cool without any dust. So thank you everyone for watching. Um, this was actually very fun to make because this is my first time cleaning a very dusty PC from start to finish. It took me three hours and then that three hours then has to be compressed into this 30 minute video which for someone of my intellectual ability is not that easy, but I think I did a decent enough job. So thank you all for joining me and hope you'll have a nice day or night wherever you are.